Namaste. Very good evening. Welcome to Talk Program Talk with Wom. This program is presented by Channel S. As usual, today I have brought a new personality, and this personality is really very versatile. He has got three master degrees in three different subjects. He got master degree in public health from Australia and he got master degree in human rights from Kathmandu School of Law and he got another master degree from Dhaka University in Psychology and he is none other than Mr. Krishna Gopal Payu. Welcome to our program, Krishnaji. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Omji. So how is going on nowadays? <sighs> I'm relaxed, actually. I'm, I look after my elderly mom, make sure that she eats well, and she's safe in the corona pandemic. I see. And uh, I'm enjoying, actually, I'm enjoying my life, despite our country is in turmoil. Mm -hmm politically and um, because I I like to relax okay. I don't I don't want to uh, I, I have to work very hard to get to you because you are very versatile you have been engaging in uh, many many sectors and basically you have been focusing on social work right advocating the rights for the people from different walks uh, I've seen that you have been advocating for the rights of children, women, people with mental and physical disabilities, refugees, elderly people, marginalized populations, LGBTs that is lesbian and gays, displaced, stateized, and so on. Uh, I, I, can I say that you are voicing for the voiceless people? Am I right? Indeed. Actually, uh, I don't know why uh, when I was a child, I grew up without a father and uh, we had a lot of problem. We suffered so much discrimination and violation mm -hmm. from our own community mm -hmm. and, uh, and <clears throat> due to that experience, I just became fearless advocate I can't I really don't want to see any <coughs> violation or discrimination towards anybody not only humans but also animals or environment mm -hmm. you know and yeah th this is my passion and my education led me to understand these fields better so that I can advocate Mm -hmm. better way but in Nepali context as you know most of the, our population is uneducated mm -hmm. and feudal and, uh, and many who have qualifications also I feel that they are not really educated they are you know I don't know they, they don't research they just read the curriculums and they go to examination and that's it they don't update the knowledge on the issue I see. and what's happening around the world and that's why in nepal i feel that very little advocates or very little uh, acad academic, <laughs> academic but recently we have seen many groups no uh, uh, associated with uh, ingo and ngos they have formed the groups uh, who are really very advocating for the voiceless people everywhere we can see nowadays right i'm not sure really actually you know i'm i'm not against ngos or ngos and i am not with them as well because in context of nepal a uh, lot of ngos NGOs runs as a, a club, oh. that private club, and they have. Is it your personal allegations? 
No, no, uh, personal. You, 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 you know, you, re you research on uh, all these uh, NGOs. You know, you will see the board members are always same people. You know, and you know, and they hire staff they want uh, whom they want. Uh, okay, Mr. Vaya, let's not deviate to the, that uh, very conflicting and controversial thing. Uh, let's go. Uh, and you better know that our this program's main motto, our uh, main objective, is to disseminate positive messages to the youth, Nepalese youth. And we want to get them inspired from the personality like you, right? My guest personalities. Okay. Uh, okay. You, you, just, you just tell me how hard you had to work uh, for getting further education. <laughs> It was very hard, you know, as a growing, growing up, uh, I was a hopeless, actually, I was hopeless. But inside my soul, I knew that education is very... Here is the point. We can just show the path to the youth. If they are very much interested to get higher education on their one, uh, you can give some tips with your own experiences. Actually, that uh, everybody should know that education is important. Yeah. Without education, yeah. nobody can advance himself or herself. And, and I knew, I knew myself that I want to be educated, I want to learn, mm -hmm. and that should, mm -hmm. all Nepalese citizens or all youth should have that mm -hmm. within themselves. Mm -hmm. But some people may not have that, mm -hmm. some people do. But yeah. the first initiation to success or education is you must have a drive uh -huh. to understand. It's not about job. It's not about making money. It's not about uh, <clears throat> uh, becoming a fam fam famous person. No, it's yeah. about knowing the truth, having desire to understand the truth desire to know what's happening within us is actually is it true or not true and to distill to analyze properly scientifically mm -hmm. so that we can create better world mm -hmm. or better yeah, that's nice create better world yes better world for every people yes 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 so my my suggestion to youth is be positive and have the drive to educated yourself be educated and don't think about profession don't think about oh i want to make money so that i want to get this profession or that profession you know in nepal a lot of people wants to be a doctor a lot of people wants to be a lawyers and engineers you know but i think i think you should study what your soul tells you to do you should do what you want to do is mm -hmm. not what your father wants to do or uh, your that's family. That's point, wants yeah. To do. And it's, if you do that, you will not be successful. It's, you need to have a passion for the subject which you are going to study. If you do that, then it will be like a water, drinking water. It will be easier for you, you will be interested and you will thrive on it. Mm -hmm. But if you study something which you are not interested and your family wants you to study, then I don't think in long run, even you pass, even you succeed, even you make money, I don't think in long run you will be happy and content. This is the philosophy of life, your personal, right? Yes, right. this is how I follow my life. But without money also we can't just run the life. Oh yeah, that's true. You need money too. But uh, to do that in Nepal, you know, having grand quality, you cannot get job here, mm -hmm. you know. You need to know the people and you need to make sure that how you are going to survive if you have a family, then how you are going to provide bread, bread and butter for them? You need to think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you can't just follow your dream or whatever you want to do. And but if you cannot provide food for your family, and that's not good. But you need to think: what's your priority? Either okay, uh, Mr. Vile. Uh, 
are you doing all these things that is you are advocating for the health helpless uh, and very uh, poor people right socially uh, you, you, we can say that exploited somewhat exploited right uh, discriminated right people exploited discriminated and assaulted we can say well, are you doing all this for only social work or getting recognition uh, are you uh, getting little uh, financial return or not actually while I was working in different country, I'm getting paid. I see. Know? I'm getting paid. While I was working with uh, the refugee organization in Australia, I was getting huge sum of money. You know? I see. And I was working, I was very honest to my work. I did best as I can. I never procrastinate my responsibility. You know, I always try to do better and we always try to do uh, <clears throat> how we discussed, how can we uh, deliver uh, best uh, um, service for those people, you know, brought new policies brought new procedures, wrote new procedures, you know, and you know like but in Nepal is different kettle of fish. In Nepal I'm not working uh, in NGO, INGO and this is s s almost most of time volunteerism. You know, I see. I, I wanted That's to, great. Yeah. I wanted to create a, a space for people. I want them to have the equal opportunity. So like uh, in 1992, while I was working on a <coughs> water project, I knew I knew that a lot of children die that time because of contaminated water and sanitation problem, you know. And as soon as uh, we finished that project, actually none, actually none, virtually none children died there. I see. And elderly people, mm. you know, a lot of elderly people are living now, mm. you know, and <clears throat> this is one of the, I feel that this is one of the biggest achievement in my life that a very few dollars mm. saved thousands of people from Harris City and Thaiba and Baregang because that project uh, yeah. brought water from Godawari and which, very good which allowed you know like 22,000 volunteers worked for that project and have you managed all the volunteers on your one personal initiation no, I was a liaison officer, you know, I, I, I was a liaison officer with the donors and uh, the uh, beneficiaries. Hmm. The, the, the whole, the coordinated, the whole work was coordinated by Guti in Hari City. Guti and also by uh, Village Development Committee. So, I was, I was uh, in between those two people, you know, and, and uh, it was really, I, I still feel very happy that, uh -huh. that social work really brings you innermost, you know, satisfaction, yes, pleasure, a kind of pleasure, untold pleasure. Yes, I, I think so. Uh, I am, I, although a lot of people, a lot of youth hmm. in recent days, they don't know, mm -hmm. they don't know about my contribution or how hard it was for us to just to drink water, clean water mm -hmm. in Hari City in 90, prior to 1992, you know, and uh, so, and um, I, even a lot of people forget about my contribution. I am not really worried. I am not here to um, make name. I am here to contribute mm -hmm. and get a result. And I am I'm, I'm happy that uh, I think I you, have... You, you want to pay selfless contributions to make a better, better society, community, yes? Always, always. That's I, great. I have always, I have never thought of only myself, you know, like if I am only thinking about myself, I can't contribute because many places are corrupt, you know, and you know, if, if you are raising a voice uh, for minority, mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of, you know, like country or a lot of places, you can get a lot of problem mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't want to, uh, um, 
talk about minority a lot of people don't want to talk about uh, their rights and their you know and like especially um, I, I, sp and I hope you have collected all necessary courage confidence experiences from uh, the foreign countries uh, uh, I think you must have visited many countries how many <sighs> I have visited more than 70 countries. Will you mention some of them? I have almost visited all the European countries. I see. And, uh, in North America, Americas, North America, South Americas, and in Asia, and Australia, you know. I haven't had a chance to visit Africa, but I was supposed to go two months ago, but uh, lockdown and corona thing, I postponed this whole uh, opportunity, but uh, Yes, I did gain a lot of, lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. While you compare your experiences right out there and here, uh, what's lacking in our youth? Can you give some tips? And most of they, they have to improve, correct? Um, no, in cont our country is very young. We, we young in democracy, yeah, you know? sure. and a lot of people are still very feudal feudal in thinking acting and you know all these things and what and our education system is very feudal and our bureaucratic system is very feudal our political system is very feudal and you know a lot there are very very little people who can think uh, to change this feudal uh, mess in this country because we have very little uh, uh, think tank. Can, can you suggest some ways to change the things going on? The first of all, I think the government should bring new law to change. Introduce new laws. New laws to introduce better education system mm -hmm. because only education can change the country because education is the only thing which change people's mentality you know and without education like the current uh, uh, policy to education is very futile you know they don't, mm -hmm. they don't let you th let youth to think mm -hmm. they let youth to regurgitate mm -hmm. and get high marks mm -hmm. By regurgitating, your brain doesn't develop. By thinking, your brain develops. Uh -huh. Our education system doesn't let you think. Uh -huh. So it's a huge problem for us, you know, and you know, our government, it's, it's sad to say that I don't see in near future there will be any uh, paradigm shift in this culture. Mm -hmm because I don't see anybody is interested to change this uh, <coughs> feudal education system because a lot of uh, many uh, who are working in uh, high positions or either they don't know what's going on or they don't want to change because they are in big positions. No, can I dare say that as you are yourself a uh, good activist, right? Volunteer activist, you can lead this this campaign? I sort of I can, but the problem is that the understanding of uh, uh, our population is is uh, quite low, you know, like, uh, like I used to write a lot of articles in a newspaper. Mm -hmm. I hardly get responses from Nepal, Nepali citizens. Mm -hmm. And I write, you know, up-to-date issues, you know, I and I was really fed up writing, you know, I thought some queries will uh, tweet my article, but I hardly get any feedback. And I... And let's, uh, let's hope we'll get feedback on this program. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, by the way, I have come to know that you are very certified immunologist as well, yes? Yes. Immunologist. Uh, will you just suggest uh, something those all of us are just you know going through the pandemic coronavirus will you just boost them encourage them how to stay healthy as immunologist actually we need to first of all we need to think that this virus is true 
it's not you know uh, some people say that it is you know like lab made no it's not only lab made it's, it doesn't matter whether it's lab made or whatever you know it is virus no, yeah. and most scientists know and most scientists mm -hmm. is working to create a, va a vaccine now some people just you know just fabricating the story the lab made something like the room or maybe still best list right it's even lab made uh. if 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 cause you disease mm -hmm. we shouldn't focus on lab made or is natural created mm -hmm. it doesn't matter it is pathogen mm -hmm. we it causes disease so we need to we need to think how to prevent this disease from happening to our society mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and a lot of people in nepal really don't know and not show you know and there are you know theories going on you know if you get vaccinated you'll die you know all this you know <coughs> skeptical uh, uh, yes uh, <laughs> amongst all this un yeah. uneducated people and you know like come on you know there's thousands of scientists are working so hard to create this oh, vaccine really? and you know and and you have no idea you are following a news which is baseless and you can't even recheck the person who is saying who is he mm. how qualified he is you know it's and it's, it's a big problem in uh, uh, Nepali society, you know, the bad news uh, goes viral very quickly yeah. and the good news, they don't want to understand, they don't try. Yeah. Come on, read the literature, in a, you know, there are thousands of literature in the internet, you don't even have to pay, you know, hmm. and what's happening with virus, what's happening, you know, in around the world, you know, how people are dying, you know. The problem is a lot of people don't also know that <clears throat> how you boost your immune system, how vaccine works. That, that's why uh, yeah. we have to come to the point. Yeah, you know, like a uh, immune system is, is run by white cells and right. how you make this immune system strong is by exercising, by sleeping well, by eating well, like a greenery, like a green food salad, mm -hmm. raw salad. And you know, you can't, and uh, a lot of vitamin C, drinking water properly. Positive know. thoughts, confidence, well, con confidence. Confident is something i am not sure because confident can kill you sometimes oh yes because yes. if you go and catch a, a, a very very venomous snake mm. with confidence mm. he might bite you so you need to uh, uh, be cautious you know what is oh. this okay mr bio yeah. i will ask a uh, little very exciting thing you see uh, most of the people cannot just ask sometimes to their friends as well uh, they cannot just put this question up uh, as the coronavirus is going on even the couples uh, i think some couples are not having intercourse making love right what about uh, having a sexual relationship? Is it safer? I think uh, you are not allowed to mm -hmm. interact with other people mm -hmm. than having in the sexual relationship uh -huh. with the, uh, someone you don't know is it uh -huh. put yeah, you yeah. put you in risk. Oh, yeah. But if you are having sex with your uh, monogamous partner, yeah. then I don't think it's a problem as long as she or he is not roaming around elsewhere and then you know it's okay but you know no what i mean is is this uh, topic uh, positive for the coronavirus the pandemic or negative actually a lot of literature says that having masturbation or having sex uh, can boost your immune system uh, yes. that's different thing you know that's of course if i think if we um a healthy person would do it hmm. who has a partner you know but uh, it will boost your immune system it will boost your uh, your confidence whatever you know but uh, but if you are thinking about uh, multiple partners then i don't suggest you to do that at the moment because uh -huh. the pandemic, pandemic is real and and a lot of people are dying and dead 
So we should be very serious and wash your hands as much as you can. Wash your clothes. All the safety measures uh, uh, introduced by the government in each country, we have to go through, right, strictly. The problem is the government is so racist in this, this country that a lot of minorities, uh, linguistic minorities, don't even speak or understand this national language and they don't make effort to advertise the safety measures in their mother tongue and that is not done in democratic country and I think the government, somebody should file a case against this government because everybody has right to the information and this especially the the, the information like coronavirus mm -hmm. is is staking their life right. and their loved ones sure. and even in you know capital city you know i hardly see uh preventive me measures like <clears throat> is uh, circulated in a mother tongue of nepal bhasa I you see. know mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are done who don't understand uh, 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 cost Nepali language yeah, yeah, yeah. and what would they do you know and <clears throat> the the information the Minister of Information should know this and also the all these mayors are newars and they should know this this may sound simple this may sounds you know okay uh, very nice uh, you, you have given here uh, you have raised a very nice point you see that uh, language should be made easier for communicable for massive number regarding the education of coronavirus yes you mean no it's it's it's, it's not the language it's about information it's the right to information right to information like the, okay the people who doesn't speak host language are are also citizens of this country so they have the right to know what is coronavirus? Oh, yeah. What is the risk measures? Yeah. Risky activities mm. and how you prevent this? Yes. You know, you you know, and I don't think the government is serious. You know, and a lot of uh, who runs the ministries, they are not specialists. Okay, Mr. Vaio, uh, uh, you have given lot lot more supportive information. Really, very great. I, I, will, I would like to thank you just before leaving I would like to ask you to give a very brief positive message to all the youth during such difficult position in short brief message personal I just want to I request all the youth of this country don't despair because time will change time will heal and the coronavirus pandemic will end uh -huh. you know really and uh, just be positive and uh, focus on your studies uh -huh. and uh, focus on what you want to do mm -hmm. in life and work for it because without what hard work you will not achieve anything so you must work for yourself and that is the only way to succeed Thank you very much, Mr. Vile, for giving time to our program. Have a nice time ahead. See you again next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Omji. And uh, it's my pleasure to come here. And, uh, and thank you. And STV as well for inviting me. Thank you very much for being with us. I really appreciate your precious time for us. Next week, at the same time, I'll be back with another personality in this program. Talk with whom? Please wait for us until next week. Goodbye. Namaste.